Father, I've tried them all. I've tried animals, hippies, fisters. None have worked. I think I'm ready for a more standard approach. I'm ready for advice, Father. All right, then. Now you're ready to pump some serious healing because Holy Priest is the no bullshit, no tricks, no shenanigans healer of this game. Sit tight, relax, and enjoy as we give you the talents, essences, gear, corruptions, rotations, and a lot more stuff to have on your holiest of journeys. This video is sponsored by WOW Apparel, our merch store. It's official. Jokes aside, we have some pretty cool hand-drawn designs for t-shirts, hoodies, and more and you can take a peek on the teespring link down below international shipping included guaranteed corruptions with the first purchase when doing dungeons you want to get trail of light as the talent option on the first row when you cast flash shield on a different target which you will because your boys and gals will eat the charges and fireballs like it's sunday cookout at your grandma's house so you will replicate 35% of the healing to the previous target you healed with flash heal. This will give you a semblance of AoE healing with one cast and overall provide you with a more solid throughput. For raiding you want enlightenment more since mana will be an issue there. Having freedom with mana or at least 10% more freedom will give you the option to spam more expensive heals and thus increasing the amount of HPS you can pump during a dangerous boss phase. Second row brings about some survivability options, which are actually only one option. Angelic Feather! Due to the nature of the game, how the mechanics play out and your own weakness, mobility is a much more important aspect to address and improve. Since you have none. Like, zero. You are as mobile as a level 1 Northshire Abic recruit from Classic WoW. Next up, we have two options. Well, you have two options. I am currently writing this script while future Flame will voice it. Although that would be past Flame for you. Man, Back to the Future did not help me understand the linear progression of time. Not even sure if those words mean anything, but they sound really cool when I said it in that order, so... Let's go back to the video. Guardian Angel is the go-to option in dungeons, and even in the raid if you can reliably play with it. In dungeons, it's easy. You pop it on a target to smooth the damage intake since the bonus healing effect can essentially be used every one minute if your target survives. The raid as well has certain mechanics that allow you to use this effectively and efficiently. This does mean you need to talk with your fellow healer so you don't stack or waste cooldowns. If you are unsure, Cosmic Ripple is a very good alternative. It's passive, and it provides AoE healing to 5 injured allies. It procs when your holy wards come off cooldown, which are a major part of your playstyle anyway. Meaning you will proc this pretty often, and it's free, unlike Romance. Level 60 row brings about utility and crowd control. Usually all options are viable in specific scenarios, and mostly rely on what you need to do. A universal choice mostly used in dungeons is Shining Force. There are plenty of uses in keys to push mobs back and if you are a maverick, you can even run a lot of corruption and use this to deal with things from beyond. Useful in raids, also on mechanics like Skitra to push illusions away. Sky's the limit. Moving down the list, Surge of Light is usually a mythic plus option, or at least in an environment with a lot of mobility and fast-paced combat where free instant heals provide you with a lot of survivability. Although still instant, Circle of Healing is an alternative with a small cooldown. It heals 5 injured allies, including your target, it has very good effects for both rating and mythic plus, and is what we recommend you take. For the level 90 row, all options are good here, each implying a different approach. Divine Star is good when groups are packed tight so you can hit both your friendlies and the enemies on the way back too. This is more common in dungeons since raids see people spread out very often to dodge and not stack boss mechanics. 
Benediction is a good option in raids, but it implies you're using Prayer of Mending efficiently, which is not hard, but still a conditioned option. Alternatively, Halo is a straightforward option healing and damaging everyone around you in a very large area. This is a cast and forget ability, although if you plan on using it outside boss rooms, you could hit other packs of mobs, usually in dungeons, so keep that in mind. Lastly, you have three viable options again. <laughs> Yay! Flight of the Nauru is a good mythic dungeon option if you are playing with pugs or with a group that you cannot coordinate too much with. It adds consistency to your overall kit, but if you can plan pools, those pools will require a bit more and that's when Apotheosis, 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 eh, will come into play as a very strong healing cooldown to deal with the massive income of damage. In raids, take Holy Word Salvation. This is a massive raid heal that applies a bunch of hots to people and can be really efficient in prolonged damage intake phases. Obviously, it benefits from the Holy Word mechanic where its cooldown will be reduced by casting the appropriate spells. When choosing stats, it's not always straightforward for healers, and different stat combinations can net different results, not necessarily bad or good. A solid way to think about stats is that crit, mastery and versatility are pretty much tied in value, meaning you would ideally want a balanced combination of all three. Crit can rise a bit higher in dungeons followed closely by haste. Dungeons have fast-paced high-octane combat phases that benefit more from you casting quicker and getting crit heals making each global you spend more efficient. As such, there isn't a right or wrong universal way to choose your consumables, but for the sake of the video we will recommend versatility focused consumables. A core of versatility should cover your ring needs and versatile dark opal for your socket. Always use one Leviathan's Eye of Intellect though. Versatility is a stat that can never fail you and only gets better with eye level. It also boosts your survivability and the damage of the damage proc corruptions, some of them at least. Keep Machinus Brilliance on your weapon and use the Greater Flask of Endless Fathoms for the big intellect buff. If you are min-maxing, you can use the Potion of Unbridled Fury for pre-pot scenarios since most bosses won't force you to heal in the first seconds of the fight. Alternatively, the superior battle potion of intellect is good to pop mid-fight when you need a boost to your heals. Potions of replenishment can be a good mana source if you can use them properly, although most of the time you won't need them. Lastly, use feasts whenever possible for the ideal food buff, or in this case go with Biltong for versatility. Keep in mind, you can easily replace these with crit or even mastery variants or even a combination of them to keep your stats balanced. As a general rule to understand, holy priest traits are considerably bad for the spec, way worse than most other specs in the game. There are a few easy and convenient to get, but if you really want to know the strength of the traits for you, check the trait chart that you can find in the priest community on Discord. It quantifies the value of the traits to a universal intellect value showcasing why some are better than others. As such, generic stat traits will be better, one, because there is just more raw throughput gained from them, and two, they have no drawbacks in terms of playstyle since they affect all of your spells as opposed to wholly specific traits that target individual spells. If you are raiding, you will undoubtedly find yourself getting Heart of Darkness, which you should stack, provided you have the corruption to proc it. It's a very solid trait to have and it drops on every raid piece. The other trait you want to aim to get is Prayerful Litany, also stacked 3 times, if possible. This is probably the strongest holy trait you can get. In dungeons, you can alternatively aim for one Promise of Deliverance trait and as many permeating glows as you can get and fill in the rest with generic stat traits. As for minor traits, Blessed Portents, Concentrating Mending and Blood Siphon will be the strongest options. Blood Siphon mostly for the Leech since Leech is a very strong stat for healers and it procs from not only damage dealing but healing as well. Granted, only on you, but that's still healing you don't have to do. And as for defensives, resounding protection will outperform all the rest. 
When raiding, the best and easiest majors to use are either Vision of Perfection for that passive proc you may or may not like, and Life Binders Invocation, applying those AoE hots. Miners can be ever rising tide, a very solid option on pretty much any healer. Conflict and Strife, because versatility is a friend that will never betray you, and Formless Void as your 10 corruption resistance essence of choice. On top of that, Formless Void is a very good raid essence in and of itself, since it procs a lot because you have a bunch of nerds using their essences all over the place, and the intellect uptime ends up being pretty significant by the end of the fight. As for dungeons, Vitality Conduit is a super, 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 super effective major to use. It will add a tremendous amount of single target healing, while Lifebinder's Invocation is a solid alternative once again. Confidence Strife is, again, a very solid miner. Ever Rising Tide provides a lot of value as well, while Spirit of Preservation will boost your flash heal throughout the dungeon, which is already one of your main abilities cast in keys. One note to make, which applies mostly to dungeons, but can be a concept taken in raids as well. There are essences that can assist you with damage output. We elected to avoid them, since dealing damage as a healer implies you knowing your spec in and out, knowing the encounter in and out, being able to communicate with everyone in your group, and so on. We focus more on the basics in our video, since a lot of people take basics and fundamentals for granted, and watch MDI hoping to perform like the top boys. Mastering the basics makes all of us better players, and it's a philosophy you can take outside of WoW as well. Once you have that down, you will know by yourself when to and not to do damage. Hopefully you are raiding, and if you are not, it's worth tackling some bosses simply for the awesome available trinkets this raid tier. Forbidden Claw is a top contender, and one of the reasons I mentioned you might not need mana potions earlier, since this baby gives you back mana, usually enough for you to end the fight. The damage effect isn't bad either. The Alchemist Stone is a solid pick if you are an alchemist, not a required one but an arguably easy to get since there is no RNG involved in crafting it. Conk of Dark Whispers is a dungeon drop that funnels a buttload of crit, which we discussed is pretty good for you, and Humming Black Dragon Scale is the Rathian Trinket with a very 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 high uptime on its haste buff. There are two corrupted weapons you can loot from the raid, both pretty good to begin with. Vor's Yokal will come by sooner and will give you the Void Ritual Corruption, which is stat procs. Stats are good, stats are life! You might want to replace it later on with the Eye Stock of Ilginoth for the Ineffable Truth Corruption that works well for the Holy Priest, since the entire mechanic of the spec is reducing the cooldown of your nuclear heals. Or holy words, nuclear heals just sounds cooler. More important though. I'm a man-child, what do you want from me? Just get out, get out. There are also other corruption effects you could aim to get, depending on how you want to adjust your playstyle. Infinite Stars, Twisted Appendage and Gushing Wound are very strong single target damage corruption that are worth mentioning, but they won't help you with your actual healing. Stat procs and stat increases, however, are always good. Severe, Masterful and Versatile tackle the extra stats from all sources. There are also proc variants of these that all synergizes with each other. One often overlooked corruption is Siphoner, for the leech argument we made earlier. At the end of the day, if you can't get it, Ineffable Truth will probably make the most difference for you. When healing your raid, as a Holy Priest, you want to keep Holy Word Sanctify on cooldown and use it for grouped up injured allies and Holy Word Serenity for one target, usually the tank or a nerd taking damage and soaking or being debuffed by the boss, usually a spot healing situation. Cast Circle of Healing on cooldown and use Prayer of Mending on cooldown as well. Halo is good when a lot of people are injured, while Flash Heal can help with emergency single target healing. Outside of these, you will mostly fill in with prayer of healing for AoE raiding, heal for single target and renews when you need to be on the move and your group needs healing. And if you don't need to heal, just cast smite. As with all healers, you want to efficiently heal when damage happens and not press your abilities like a DPSer would. 
reacting accordingly and efficiently would not only save you mana, it will save your other healers mana and ultimately save your group to get the boss down. In dungeons, you'll still want to keep your holy words on cooldown, although Serenity might see more play and be more crucial to cast before Sanctify in terms of priority and importance. Flash Heal will be your main ability used throughout since mana isn't a major issue in dungeons. Divine Star when things are grouped and by things I mean your group. Yes, they are things to be healed, they have no soul because they stay in the fire to deal more damage. You know what I'm talking about. Prayer of Healing can be a good AoE healing when everyone needs some love. If shit isn't hitting the fan, Prayer of Mending is good but not often used and renew again when you need to move and to heal. You'll find yourself smiting a lot in dungeons when nobody needs healing. <laughs> I know right, that never happens. The purpose of all of this is to give you an idea about how strong and important certain abilities can be depending on the situation. Ultimately, it falls down to you to make the right call in keeping your group alive. This and a lot more can be found in the Warcraft Priest community. The holy section has a lot of information you can use to advance your next playstyle to the next level. Nifir, alongside with the holy team and Shalane, helped us with details and feedback about our video and we want to shout them out. You can even catch Nifir's holy guide on Icy Veins where he goes over a lot of cool things, especially more in-depth explanation about the rotation and playstyle of the spec. So thank you very much for the feedback guys. You rock. See you in Shadowlands! And of course, as always, a major shout out to our patrons for supporting us and all of our content. Thank you very much, guys. You are the reason we can keep doing this stress-free and with confidence in the future. And if you want to support us a little bit more and are curious about our Patreon situation, because we have some goodies there, you can check the link down below. Thank you for watching the video, and we'll see you in the next one.